is it visible yes sir okay so is the sample holding so the pressure vacuum uh, inside this uh, vacuum chamber this will be 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus uh, 7 millimeter of mercury and you have to have this certain uh, sample holding frame is there where wafer silicon wafer is there and uh, and there is a crucible this is the crucible holder so hold the material so here you can see the crucible and this is the shutter first it is uh, when it is not in use it is in off mode and when you need to uh, perform certain operation you need to open this shutter okay so that because when you raise the power of the uh, crucible heated you need to hit this crucible started evaporation at that time this shutter will be on okay so this material will be ever evaporated and it so so uh, after evaporating the material it will uh, it will deposit it onto this wafer sample this is called thin film deposition that's why it is called thin film deposition this material will be deposited onto the silicon wafer okay so temperature raised at a high value so the advantage is no chances of nucleation formulation because if high temperature uh, you release the complete the evaporation temperature then every then every will be melted uniformly and uh, the uniform evaporation uh, uh, and there is a less chance of nucleation on the film so that uh, that is not the desirable nucleation formation is not desirable okay and that is why thickness of the film then you want to switch off the power supply to the crucible and this shutter will be in off mode okay you put the shutter so the evaporant will not reach to the sample so automatically uh, the deposition will be stopped on the slide uh, so that is why this shutter is uh, so required and uh, there are five components in a simple evaporated system okay this one this one this one this one and this now the pressure inside this the pressure inside this chamber is less than 1 milliliter it has to be okay the vapor atoms uh, travels into this chamber in a straight in a straight line until they strike a surface where they accumulate as a film so now uh, here is again shown uh, a schematic diagram the wafers are here these are the wafers one two three four five i mean many more more of that which is enlarged the, the enlarged view is here okay so these are the wafers given in this way connected These are the charged means uh, material heated uh, uh, in the bell jar surface. It's a bell jar type surface. Heated material is there. This is a, uh, actually this material are on the crucible. And this is the uh, pumps. One is the roughing pump. It's a backing backing pump, and another is diffusion pump. Okay, so it is the diffusion pump, and
So in the diffusion form, what happened? The diffusion oil is evaporated and it condenses back using some. So uh, the rough pump is used to. Uh, this one is your diffusion pump, actually diffusion or cry pump, whatever. Uh, you can use this one. So the extra oil can be accumulated in this way. It drags some of the uh, air molecules from the chamber and is it is uh, it is vented outside of this using this this uh, valve. Okay, so as a result of which the chamber will be evacuated. Okay, so that is the basic principle of uh, this diffusion pump. So. Uh, Vent is required to increase some amount of gas inside this uh, this chamber, so that inside uh, so, so outside pressure is same. You can open the bell jar and you can take out the substance, so that why some venting mechanism has to be there. Okay. So. Uh, the pressure inside the chamber should be very low, one milliliter or less. So reason is that for getting uniform deposition of the material on, on the material or any material on the surface, so you need high vacuum. Okay. If, uh, if vacuum is low, then uh, means free path will be low because there if vacuum is low, there is a chance of high collision between the evaporated molecules. Okay. Uh, because of this collision, so the evaporated molecules will not travel in a straight line path. If it does not travel in a straight line path, so then uh, the problem is the deposition on the wafer will not be uniform. Say due to the scattering uh, among the molecules, so the deposition will be highly non-uniform. So that is why we need the vacuum inside the chamber to high value. So maybe a 10 to the power minus 6, which is very good vacuum for evaporation. So other point is evaporation system may contain up to four crucibles to allow deposition on multiple layer without breaking vacuum. Okay, so maximum four crucibles can be there in this position. You can attach so that without breaking the vacuum. So one material you can deposit, then you feed power to skin, second crucible. So second material will be evaporated and then you feed power to the third uh, crucible. Uh, third material will be evaporated and when you want to evaporate certain material, uh, so the other crucible are covered by the shutter. That's why the shutter is there. Okay. So for every crucible mechanism, shutter is present. So if you want to uh, power, uh, give some certain power to the crucible one at that time the shutter will be on uh, sh shutter will be open at the same time the shutter of crucible two three and four will be in closed form okay so that from from uh, there no contamination ca can come so in this way there is a possibility of layer by layer different film you can evaporate for example as uh, the, the the chromium gold is required chromium gold uh, the material you can use the material as chromium gold which will be deposited onto the thin film wafer silicon wafer so always gold alone will not serve any purpose you need chromium and gold so you can have two crucibles in one crucible chromium and another crucible gold so chromium is evaporated then put the shutter over the chromium source then feed power to the gold crucible then and then gold will be evaporated so without breaking the vacuum so two materials you can deposit chromium and gold another is possible that is co-evaporation if you want to have the alloy film so alloy film is sometimes required to make uh, uh, some thin film resistance nichrome nickel and chromium alloy chromium alloy so there is also uh, possible if you feed power both the crucibles so both chromium and nickel will evaporate simultaneously they will mix together and deposition will be the alloy deposition at the same time 
okay at the same time so both alloy deposition and layer by layer individual deposition is possible by using the multiple crucible inside the vacuum chamber so evaporation system uh, it can accommodate if there is a this type of big bell jar you can see use it as chamber it can accommodate uh, a more than one crucible to get various kinds of films okay so that is for thin film deposition onto the silicon wafer so this a small picture is enlarged into the next section here which is called the resistance heated evaporation okay now some of the crucible here you can see uh, the heated spiral or you can you can you can simple boat boat spiral okay boat dimple boat you can dimple boat spiral both can be used so uh, this is the heating element actually so this is normally made of either tungsten or molybdenum because molybdenum or tungsten will have very high melting point okay so that you can use materials which melted below the melting part of tungsten or molybdenum and that is nearly 2000 degree centigrade now the source material is inserted into the crystal okay inserted into the crystal here into the spiral here and then if you apply the current if you apply allow the current flowing through the coil so automatically it will be red hot it will be hot it's a resistive heating principle uh, basically i square r is the heat generation i square r so it will be red hot and this material will be melted and will be evaporated and this kind of arrangement is useful if the source is in the form of rod or form of stick but if the source uh, is in the form of the powder then this kind of arrangement will not help you then you have to go for a dimple boat dimple boat arrangement where in the central there is a small boat and there you can put the charge powder from charge and then if you apply the power or current to this boat here so it will be heated and uh, evaporation will take place so this is the basic resistance heated evaporation filaments so if you uh, there are salient points on this particular evaporation technique which are very simple and inexpensive uh, uh, very inexpensive technique there is uh, no ionizing radiation takes place from this resistivity evaporation uh, charge requirement is very small very less short filament life is the advantage and contamination from the heating element uh, short filament life is Uh, disadvantage not advantage uh, because if you use uh, frequently this kind of filament when the current flow is not uniform through that uh, then sometimes the some location uh, of the filament will be excessively heated and because of that point will be the weak point and then the filament may break uh, that happens because when the source will melt so it will uh, agglomerate a certain position some of the filament you can you can uh, ring so uh, will be short circuited uh, means resistance will be less current will be more current will be more means i square into r so heat generation will be more so that 
uh, heat generation if it is more it allows the filament will not be uniform heat generation will not be uniform so in that case in some location heat generation is more obviously and uh, uh, there is a chance of breaking on that particular filament two reasons one uh, the filament that particular portion will soft and the second reason is again you know thermal expansion coefficient mismatch if the temperature or heat throughout the filament where is different at different point because uh, because of that uh, there will be the uh, breaking of the filament and that is why the life of the filament is too short and and another disadvantage of this technique is the contamination from the filament because they melt the material which is uh, evaporated that molten material will be in touch with the filament either both or the spiral wire so some of the constituents from the filament will evaporate also along with the material and as a result what happened as a uh, so film will be contaminated with the filament material which is disadvantage in this case and and small charge it because uh, uh, here in this boat uh, in this boat we cannot accommodate large amount of material or in the filament you cannot accommodate a large amount of source so if you need very very thicker film then you may go for two three filament small filament can accommodate small uh, the, 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 the total film thickness on the wafer may be very small that is the that is one kind of uh, disadvantage of having uh, this structure okay another thing so electron beam evaporation another technique which is called electron beam evaporation technique okay now uh, what is being done a crucible is uh, used here this one uh, is the filament so look at this picture there is a crucible so this is the filament from which the electrons are ejected basically the cathode rays and uh, uh, now some accelerated uh, accelerating grid is there and uh, and and uh, through that accelerating grid those electrons are ejected and they are deflected using electrostatic or electro uh, magnetic field now if you apply certain electric field then deflection will be there because electrons are charged particles then here is a magnetic field high magnetic field so that the electron beam will be deflected and it may be focused to a certain point okay and after focusing it that point is incident on the on the crucible so that uh, that means electron beam generation then acceleration then guiding the guiding the beam so uh, through the electrostatic uh, uh, deflecting plates or magnets then it will be it will be focused to a point and this high energy electron beam is instant on the on the on the charge here 
on the charge and as a result of which locally heat will be transferred to the charge and locally it will be melted so and it will be evaporated it will be evaporated in this way now this particular focus beam if you can scan over the surface so only surface will melt and and from there evaporation will take place so since the complete material is not going to melt so there is no chance of contamination from the crucible because from the surface only the kinetic energy of the electron beam is transferred and and because depending on the capacity of the crucible you can use more materials for evaporation and uniform thick metal films because you are using large amount of charge you can have uniform thick metal film and the purity of the film will be will be good compared to earlier two techniques okay which i have discussed the co evaporation to form alloy and multiple source so these are the points because uh, uh, similar crucible uh, if you use side by side so uh, one by one first electron will be focused on this charge so then is the next charge you can focus it so that will be evaporated then in the next that will be evaporated so same electron beam can be used for heating the material from one hot another name of the crucible is hearth okay hearth h e a r t h crucible means hearth so uh, from from one hearth to the second hearth to the third hearth so in that way one by one you can just deposit the material and if you want to make alloy material that is also possible then uh, you have to uh, two electron source must be used there there are two hot two electron beam source so different beam will be incident in on the different material so automatically the evaporation uh, to to will take uh, evaporation will take place so this is the basic principle of the electron beam evaporation okay here uh, certain disadvantages are available like for for accelerating the electron beam you need very high voltage nearly uh, 10 kilo volt nearly 10 kilo volt uh, is required so this 10 kilo volt acceleration voltage if it is incident on the aluminium for example or any metal they can produce x rays so because x ray principle is also you know that is a high energy electron beam is incident on a target and from the target x rays is emitted so that means there is a chance of ionizing radiation in this particular technique so the metal may be contaminated with those ions which are basically x ray or other rays may be may be emitted after hitting that uh, accelerated electron on the material onto the material okay so the ionization radiation and another is to another uh, point is is that the beam is to be focused so if that beam is not properly focused there may be secondary ion emission from other materials so that the secondary ion emission from other peripherals or uh, uh, other periphery uh, material uh, it may contaminate uh, uh, the film also but uh, it with proper care if you take then you can get very high purity film using the electron beam evaporation technique okay. very high impurity film can be can be you can you can get it using this technique electron beam evaporation technique okay so that is the advantage of having uh, this technique compared to other techniques okay other evaporation techniques so a clear up to this much anyone have any doubts this is a theoretical structure okay so i'll give you the uh, slides 
and also the lecture notes will be uploaded soon in the uh, Google Classroom. Okay. So I think uh, uh, that's all for today. Okay. Okay, sir. Do you have any any queries, any doubts? You can ask me. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Then uh, I will end this meeting. Thank you all. So see you on Friday. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Good day.